What's up, YouTube? This is 82 Today, we're going to talk about Hal Greer. Now, Hal Greer is one of the most forgotten superstars in NBA history. He was born June 26, 1936 in Huntington, West Virginia. And he grew up in a really small town. And one of the, re one of the things he said was when he was in his Hall of Fame being inducted is he had four goals when he was drafted to buy a nice car because he said growing up in a small town, no, nobody he knew had a nice car. His second goal was to become an NBA All-Star, which he achieved. His third goal was to be an NBA champion. And his fourth goal was to be in the Hall of Fame, which he accomplished all of these feats. And he did it all with the same franchise. He started with the Syracuse Nationals. And for those who don't know, the Syracuse Nationals are what today are known as the Philadelphia 76ers. So, originally, there was a team in Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Warriors, right? And this team would move west to San Francisco. It wasn't until Syracuse moved, the Syracuse franchise moved to Philadelphia and became the Philadelphia 76ers. But he played his entire career with the Syracuse Nationals slash Philadelphia 76ers. Now, he was a very quiet and reserved player. Uh, you can't really find a lot of information on his, uh, on his backstory or anything like that. He was always known as a silent killer on the court. Like I said, he grew up in Huntington, West Virginia, where he starred for Douglas High School, and he was the first African-American to receive a scholarship at Marshall University. He went to an all-black school in the segregated South. He averaged 19.4 points per game and three varsity seasons. He was an all-conference selection in 1957 and 1958 and an All-American pick in 1958. After being selected by the Syracuse National in the second round of the 1958 draft, now, some people might hear that and say second round, because today, second round means, like, you're, like, the 60th pick. You gotta understand, back in this era, there were a lot less teams. So, him being selected in the second round makes him, like, the 13th pick overall. And so he didn't have like an immediate immediate impact on the team. Uh his first game, his NBA debut, he he would go 0 for 4 from the the field, only putting up 2 points. And that year um uh, he didn't have the best um of his career, he put up 11.1 points per game. Although his field goal shooting was pretty efficient for the time, he shot 45% and 77% from the free throw line, which an interesting fact about him with free throws is he was known for taking a jump shot for his free throw. Like he would jump in the air and shoot it. Probably one of the only players to do that. Um, so anyways... The Syracuse Nationals were before him. I don't want to say like a a great great franchise. They won a championship in 1955, and like I said, he came in there at 58 59, and he didn't make an in immediate impact. Um, by 59 60, they'd be in the playoffs. And he played on a pretty good team. Uh, Dolph Shays was there, who won a championship in 55. George Yardley was there. Larry Costello, Red Kerr. Dick Barnett was there. Bob Hopkins, who for people who don't know, that's um, Bill Russell's cousin. But these How Greer teams weren't getting it done. But he kept improving. And by his third season in the 60-61 season, he was named his first All-Star team. And he 
put up 19.6 points per game, 5.8 rebounds, and 3.8 assists. Now, the thing about his first couple of years in the league, he just kept improving scoring-wise. So by the 61-62 season, he averaged 22.8 points per game, 7.4 rebounds, 4.4 assists. Although his Syracuse Nationals in the 61-62 season would lose to the Philadelphia Warriors in five games, it was a best of five, or it was a best of five series back then in that first round. Um, so he would be an All Star for nine years straight from the 60-61 season to the 69-70. But as the 60s would go on. He would have good individual seasons. Um, you know, 63, 64, for example, he put up 23 points per game. But the problem with his teams is they would they didn't have any team success. Like 63, they lost to the Cincinnati Royals in five games. Same thing in 64. And in 65, they would... Although they would get out of the first round, defeating Cincinnati, their rival, they would lose the divisional finals in seven games to the Boston Celtics, which by this time they had acquired Wilt Chamberlain. So you had a duo of Wilt Chamberlain and Hal Greer. And so you saw the potential there. But it wasn't quite what it was supposed to be yet. The team hadn't really figured it out yet. And in 65-66, you saw the team's best record yet. 55-25, and 25, although they would lose in five games in the first round to the Boston Celtics. And at this time, Hal Greer and Wilt Chamberlain were both 29 years old. Hal Greer would put up 22.7 points per game, 5.9 rebounds, 4.8 assists. And I'm sure a lot of fans back then, you know, obviously it's easy to look back now at the bigger picture, but I'm sure a lot of fans back then thought maybe this team needs to blow it up. Maybe they need, you know, maybe it was a mistake. Because they're not getting it done with Wilt. Although, the following season in 66-67, this is probably one of the greatest NBA teams in the, I want to say, first 25 years of the NBA. And I would put them in greatest all-time, too, conversation. Top 10 team of all time. So they went 68-13. and they defeated the Cincinnati Royals with Oscar Robertson in the first round, one of their rivals. Then they defeated the Boston Celtics in the divisional finals in five games, destroying another opponent and opposition and revenge tour. And uh, they go to the finals where they're matched up against the San Francisco Warriors, where they defeat Wilt Chamberlain's old team in six games. And... This was the first time in the 1960s that the Celtics had been defeated. And I want to point out something. Hal Greer himself, in that final series, averaged 26 points per game, 8 rebounds per game, and 6.2 assists. You know, had there been a finals MVP back then, he would have had a strong case. But there was a lot of good guys on this team. Chet Walker himself had 23 points. Wally Jones himself had 20 points. Billy Cunningham himself had 19.7. Wilt had 28.5 rebounds per game and 6.8 assists. So this was starting to look like the team of the future. You know, maybe they could run it back. Well, unfortunately, the following season in 67-68, the Philadelphia 76ers, although they would defeat the New York Knicks, an up-and-coming team in the first round, they would lose in seven games to their rival, the Boston Celtics. And it was a very embarrassing fashion because this was the first time in NBA history that a team had blown a 3-1 lead. So they were up three games to one with their 
with their Game 4 victory, 110-105. to Hal Greer himself had 28 points in that game, and Wilt had 22. But it just collapsed after that. The Celtics were on a mission. They defeated them. Hal Greer would kind of have poor shooting nights. Like, Game 5, for example, he'd shoot just 30%. He had a very terrible night from the line. Uh, game 6, they would lose 114-106. to 106. Hal Greer, although he would have a good shooting night, going 15 of 24, it was Will Chamberlain that had a poor shooting night. So, like I said, the Celtics would defeat them, and this was probably one of the most embarrassing losses of all time. They had every advantage to beat the Boston Celtics, and they couldn't close it out. So... Will Chamberlain, who's the sec- who's the best player on this team, um, him and Hal Greer combined averaged forty eight points per game. You know they both put up twenty four points per game, but the problem was, Wilt was starting to get frustrated with the franchise, and he demanded a trade. So he ended up getting traded to the Lakers. Although the Philadelphia 76ers would remain a good team without him because they were a pretty deep team, but their championship window had closed by this point. How Greer started, you know, I want to say declining, but it wasn't very fast. So the 68-69 season, they'd go 55-27. and How Greer would put up 23 points per game. And he would remain with the team all the way up into the 72-73 season. But like I said, he would just kind of decline slowly. And I wish I could say his team had at least competitiveness in them, but after Wilt left, you know, they were a strong team, but it would just decline. Like, they'd go from 55 wins in 69, 42 wins in 70, 47 wins in 71, 30 wins in 72, and by 1972-73, they would only be a nine-win team, and that would be Hal Greer's final year. It's kind of sad that he wasn't able to get a second championship, but I'm sure he appreciates the one he had, especially because they were the only team in the 1960s at that point to defeat the Celtics. So I'm sure it means a lot to him. So he's a 10-time All-Star, 1967 NBA champion, 7-time All-NBA, 1968 All-Star Game MVP. He's on the 75 greatest players list. And he he was one of the first Mamba mentality players in the NBA. He had a very similar play style. Obviously, it's... You can't say players are exact replicas of each other. That's not what I'm saying. But he had a pretty similar style to Kobe. He had a sick mid-range game. Uh, You know, he had a lot of moves. They had very similar field goal shooting. I mean, I think Kobe's a 44% field goal shooter for his career. And Hal Greer is a 45% field goal shooter for his career. Uh. He became a solid free throw shooter. He's a career 80% free throw shooter. Uh, His best scoring average was 24 points per game in the 68 season. And unfortunately, he passed rather recently, back in 2018, at the age of 81. He was survived by his wife, Manny. Mammy, I'm sorry. And his two daughters. So he had a brief illness and he passed away. Now, the 76ers announced on April 16th his death, and f- following that, they honored Greer prior to Game 2 of the 2018 NBA playoffs versus the Miami Heat. For the remainder of the playoffs, the Sixers wore black armbands with, with on the sleeve, it would say 15, which is tribute to Hal Greer. So, that's Hal Greer's story. A quiet reserve killer, you know. He wasn't trying to be the opposing team's friend. He was trying to win a championship. One of the greatest guards of his generation. I would say Oscar's the best guard in the 60s, right? 
Then I would say Jerry West. Then Sam Jones. Then I would say Hal Greer. So he's up there with the greats. Uh, rest in peace, Hal Greer. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thanks for watching. Thank you.